This is Jumbo McThunder. He is our hero. He's also built like an unwashed bag of shit. Today we're playing Project Zomboid, a hardcore zombie survival game where you make your character and do your best to survive the horrors of zombies. However, we're doing a challenge. And by that, I mean we're playing as Jumbo. Our goal is to escape. You see, while Jumbo was gaming on the newest Tarkov wipe, he didn't realize a zombie apocalypse was happening. And thus, he got stuck in his own home with nothing else but himself. We need a military radio. And we need guns. And a vehicle. So we have a plan. Now, with Jumbo, he only has negative traits. And so I decided to balance it out a little bit. In my head, I would activate a fuck ton of mods. However, I soon learned that there is no helping Jumbo. He is as difficult as it gets. Searching the house, we found ourselves a weapon, an electric guitar. After stepping outside, I soon learned what agoraphobic means and how much I hate it. After getting spotted by our first pack of zombies, Jumbo engaged in combat. As he studied the blade for years, he soon realized he's completely incapable. And so we used the next greatest tool to our advantage, a fence. After Jumbo got his first kills and his first drip, he was feeling confident in his ability to survive and swoon his one true love. Knowing it was a fight for survival, Jumbo decided to do something he hasn't in decades, bathe. As the water stuck to his flesh like Cheeto dust on his fingers, he had soon cleansed himself and was ready to venture out into the world to survive. After some more combat and light reading, Jumbo decided to head for more stable shelter. On the way, he found a heavily armored zombie, turning us from this to this. Once finished equipping his new gear and doing some light scavenging, it was time for our heavy hero to have his rest. As the bed creaked, it seemed to have attracted a horde and thus Jumbo awoke to fight for his life and love. Zombie after zombie, we finally made our way back outside to check the cars. No luck, so back to finish our slumber. Jumbo gets up and back to combat. We take time to scout the police station. Realizing we've attracted a small horde, Jumbo goes the fastest he's ever gone, then off to try and find Sigs at the gas station. Jumbo knows most men don't come back from this journey. He makes it just in time before the horde gets to him. After having no luck finding any SIGs, we came so close, but so far. The store gets surrounded, and Jumbo gets distracted by the food. We must escape. We run to our closest trusted ally, the fence. After getting back to the fence, we realize there is no time to fight. With the athletic capabilities of a legless hippo, Jumbo tries his best to outmaneuver the zombies. However, Jumbo has that dog in him. Pulling out every move Jumbo has to survive, Jumbo gets hit, our moves failed. We rush to get to the closest shelter. With 90% of our blood being sugar, we're in danger. With our first option occupied, we go next door to immediately scout for a meal. However, we're attacked. And Jumbo, being one-on-one -on -one with a woman, is saving himself for his darling. More approach from outside and are dispatched. We make our way back in to assess our wounds and losses. With no fedora, Jumbo feels powerless. Along with the neck wound and no guarantee of survival, Jumbo makes his way into bed, unsure if he will have a chance to continue. As it got deeper in the night, Jumbo could feel himself losing faith, and in that moment opened up his phone and saw a notification. It was her. A guarantee of what was waiting when he escaped. Jumbo realized he had to survive. He had to make it. Jumbo was struggling, but now he would make a sound strategy. A strategy not just to survive, but to thrive. In this moment of inspiration, Jumbo had developed a five-step system, which goes as follows. Identify problem, neutralize threat, collect gains, extract self, locate next. With this system he was familiar with, he was now ready to be on the offensive. Jumbo would venture out into the night. Even in the dead of night, the zombie hordes seemed to plague every single aspect of Jumbo's mission. Jumbo would spend a considerable amount of time breaking into houses to secure food, drink, and entertainment. Clearing as much as he could, our congested heartthrob continued to search every nook and cranny, and continued to find more zombies. Jumbo would find a zombie in the backyard, and kill them swiftly with 28 stomps. With our plump powerhouse filled and tired, he thought it was time to take a rest and recharge, then back out again to clear more of the undead horde that was halting his romance. Luckily for Jumbo, the town was prepared for such a threat and had installed killing machines known as fences everywhere. Jumbo had been doing more running and fighting than he's ever done, 
With a cardiovascular system constructed of only curly fries, Jumbo was beginning to improve. Slowly, but surely. However, it cannot be overstated how slowly. Jumbo found another zombie who was prepared for the apocalypse and proceeded to grab whatever guns and ammo he had on him. This would make the next phases of our plan seemingly easier. With the horde only growing and marching towards him, Jumbo had to utilize the fence over and over again. At this point, Jumbo had truly become a man of combat and a man of honor. But the horde just kept coming. Jumbo was killing as many as he can and missing just as many. I don't know why, for some reason Jumbo decided to hit the ground and trip multiple times, but that's Jumbo. They say white man can't jump, but as Jumbo learned, zombie man can't either. <laughs> After killing the zombie equivalent of the population of Wyoming, Jumbo needed to stop and eat. Docker. You see, while Jumbo may be the size of your local Discord mod, he still has to consume more calories daily than available in the whole country of Sudan. With his belly full and neck healed, Jumbo decided to battle his inner wolves and check for more vehicles. Once again, no luck. So we did the neighborly thing and killed the local vagrants. With no luck at the church, we moved on to the target we had scouted before, the police station. Assuming a Kentucky police station is overstocked with weapons is like assuming Jumbo will have a fifth plate at dinner, nearly a guarantee. Jumbo very much realized that getting into this police station was going to be very difficult, arguably the hardest thing he's had to do so far, but it was crowded. We proceeded to fight a number of normal and armored zombies and tried to secure a key to access the armory. However, they just kept coming. And the problem is Jumbo has no stamina. As a man who sees getting out of bed every morning as a daily workout, Jumbo was doing everything in his power not to collapse. Jumbo continued to scavenge all the bodies and even the desks and fridge. Jumbo still has not found any cigarettes, and because of that, he's been suffering from the same symptoms as a Chernobyl scientist. After finding practically nothing, Jumbo proceeded to raid the locker rooms and found a helmet and some extra gear. But the dead weren't done. He proceeded to fend off another horde, as with every swing he thought of his dangerous woman. Acquiring more armor and a shield, Jumbo was becoming a problem for the zombies, or so we'd hope. Jumbo finally secured a key and opened the armory jackpot. He had finally acquired the guns. Now he just needed to secure a vehicle. Jumbo had done it. He had cleared the police station, and like any man who misread signs from a woman, his life had changed completely. Jumbo decides to check the vehicles outside the station, but besides some supplies, no keys, no dice. He decides to set up shop in the security room and take his rest. After sleeping, Jumbo decided to make his way back to the base. Having not been there in days, it seems that the locals took it back over. Now was a perfect time to test out the new weapons. But you see, in that moment, my brain gained a wrinkle. And I soon remembered a small problem, which is that Jumbo's hands are more akin to glazed donuts in a hot police car than they are functioning appendages. In short, he's still fucked. Jumbo has been walking and fighting for way too long. He needs a break. With his only hope being forward, Jumbo proceeds to make his way behind the houses and take shelter in one. But very quickly, he's interrupted by another horde following him. The whole town seems to want a piece of Jumbo. He bursts out the back door and hops over a fence, only to bust his leg. He's limping and bleeding. He needs to take care of it fast, or Jumbo will be a dinner bell. Jumbo limps into one of the houses to quickly patch himself. He knows he needs to get out of this neighborhood, and so he does his best. Once Jumbo is patched up and ready, he sneaks out the window and up the road. He goes back to the bodega, but there's more inside. He just wants a fucking breather. Everywhere he goes, there's more around, and he has to find a new way. So Jumbo sneaks out from the barbershop to lead them to the fence. Jumbo has killed his fair share of zombies at this rate. One undead life after the next, and as the saying goes, it's like a box of chocolates. Jumbo wants another. After an insane set of events, Jumbo makes his way to bed, waking up in the middle of the night. Using the darkness to move unseen, he tries his best to stealth his way through town, 
Unfortunately, he does not have such skills. Realizing having the education level of a LeBron's promise student isn't enough, Jumbo goes to the bookstore. This journey is taking longer than he expected, so he started to prepare for the worst. With his longest novel so far being One Fish, Two Fish, it seems jumping right into the theory of relativity left Jumbo with the idea to just leave. Sneaking through an alley, he gets spotted by the tunnel snakes and tries to fend them off. Realizing it's another horde, he goes back in the building. Jumbo has never done well in tight spaces, so to be cramped up with all these things that want to eat him was pretty horrifying. Luckily for him, the door was unlocked. Jumbo managed to escape out the doctor's office. However, it's occurring to him that every single supply run he goes on gets him closer and closer to death. But for Jumbo, all that mattered was his blades and his woman. However, because his legs aren't made of steel, they will probably shatter if he doesn't sit down soon. Jumbo ventures into the bank, as it was the only place he could think of going to safely, and he needs to find cigarettes, which he still has not found any. Because of that, he feels closer to a meth addict than he does himself. We step into an office, only to hear more zombies outside. Exhausted, hungry, and fatter than an Eddie Murphy character, Jumbo blocks the door and once again tries to read. One book will take this man days. I'm not kidding. Don't believe me? Then check this out. Jumbo knows Ariana likes a well-read man. So after doing his best to try and finish Dr. Seuss's classics, Jumbo opens the door and takes care of the woman who kept bugging him while reading. However, after he kills this zombie, he notices that there's no one else around. So he takes the time to explore the bank and finds a water dispenser. Despite it not being carbonated, he realizes he needs to drink it or he'll die. Still, Jumbo hesitates. While drinking and searching, he gets the absolute shit scared out of him and kills the zombie that ambushed him, but realizes that it came from the upstairs. Learning that there is an upstairs, Jumbo makes sure to go up there and check for zombies first. Then he goes searching and praying for a pack of Marlboros like it was the cure. Unfortunately for Jumbo, he only seems to find paper, staplers, and pencils. Truly, he finds nothing. Once he's done searching, he reblocks the door to the office and spends the next few days eating pocket eggs and reading. Jumbo was absorbing knowledge at a rapid rate, understanding things he'd never even thought about. How to boil water. How to nail a plank of wood, using soap in a shower. He was evolving, all in the name of love. However, he was starting to feel anxious, and like a foreign college student, he needed out. He knew his princess was waiting in her castle. So Jumbo burst the door open and started making his way back to his base he had set up. Fighting more and more zombies along the way, the chair break kid was ready to go home. Despite Jumbo's activities for the past three days being eating eggs and reading, Jumbo was still exhausted. His armor probably had enough moisture in it to support an ecosystem, and he still had not found any cigarettes. But that wasn't stopping our hero. As he pushed forward, he seemed to have found a local gang of strippers, and decided to swiftly take them out. Now, I'd just like to bring everyone's attention to what apparently the game says Jumbo has been suffering with for literally the whole video. Debilitating asthma constant exhaustion, the hunger of UNICEF children, extreme panic, severe clinical depression, enough sweat to fill the Hoover Dam, crippling anxiety, the thirst of Moses, the bones of your local 150 year old, and constant near fatal heat stroke. This is Jumbo's every day, and the fact that he's able to move impresses me, considering when he steps outside, his heart beats faster than the local weeb at the DDR machine. Through all of the combat and struggle we've gone through, I was somehow not surprised Jumbo had not leveled a single skill. So he took the opportunity to roll around behind this zombie and try to level his sneak before just killing him. Jumbo, after all his runs and journeys, had reached a level in cooking that we would call Health Hazard. So while he was mushing down anything that could fit, he then proceeded to find a bed in the many of the station and go to sleep. Jumbo, for the first time in days, had no reason to go out. He may not have a steady food supply, or a clean water source, or any training with 90% of the weapons he grabbed, but he had books. And if he was going to start, he needed to read. He would spend almost all of his time on the bed, book in hand, like a pretentious Tumblr user. Due to copyright, I cannot do the original song I had planned in this section, so instead, take this flute cover.
Having finally gained the ability to pass first grade, Jumbo was on top of the world. And just like any young student, the allure of being just like Troy Bolton was too much. Jumbo started training and working out, once again how Ariana prefers them. After getting some rest and another day of training, he then decided to put his new trained strength to the test, much to the dismay of me editing this. I have no jokes for this section, please just watch on how long this took. After once again sleeping, Jumbo awoke to a sound that felt alien, a helicopter. He sees he's completely surrounded, and with no fortifications and practically no doors, this place has become a death trap. He escapes out the window to sneak to safety to a new temporary base somewhere, only to be spotted. And thus, he must do his walk again, a walk to outmaneuver all the zombies. As Jumbo marches forward, he ponders the finality of it all. Life can go so many different ways, but death, no matter how it comes, is always there, always hovering. But is that not the beauty of life, that he was able to skirt so close to the end, to be on the razor's edge of oblivion, and despite all odds claw his way out of the abyss? Is it not still heroic to improve and continue to fight, whether it be for love or for personal salvation? At the end, it is a rebellion of destiny, that who we are is not foretold, is not set in stone, but a carving to follow and bend, chip away and reveal the message, the sculpture below. Jumbo has won today, but victory in this manner is not of gain, but of personal identity. Knowing that he had the power like anyone has, Jumbo understands that this is not the end, but merely a chapter in the tale that Destiny tried to close. You may forget him, but fate will not, just like it will not forget any of us, for what we are today is not who we are tomorrow. No entity nor idea can change the beauty of death, in that we are to be anyone in life till the great equalizer grants us the ability to appreciate it. To be a part of life is heroic. To be heartbroken or excited, to be bored or to be inspired, this is heroism. To continue to defy monotony, to be despite, this is heroism. This is our dream, our goal, which in itself is heroic. For we are heroic, we are Jumbo. And he's dead. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I was able to entertain you. If you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell. If you have suggestions on games I should play, comment them down below. Have a great rest of your day, and thank you once again.